Good morning, it's Annie with Manor Farms Homestead. So it's a busy morning already out in the garden area. We're getting our sweet corn planted today. So my husband's down doing the final till on that little area before we get things planted. So I'll talk to you more about sweet corn during this video. Additionally, it's about time to start healing our potatoes. I don't heal potatoes, I mulch them. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with that. We're gonna put a little fertilizer out on the potatoes too. Now potatoes need a lot of potassium and phosphorus to make big potatoes. They don't need a lot of nitrogen. So what I actually have for them is a fertilizer that is a bloom booster um, that is high in potassium and phosphorus. So that's exactly what our potatoes need. This is the fertilizer I'm gonna be using around all of my potatoes. So since our last video, these potatoes have continued to just flourish out here. They've really, really taken off. These are some of my tallest potato plants here. None of them have actually started to bloom yet. They've just put on a massive amount of foliage. So once they start to bloom and make tubers, we should have some pretty awesome potatoes in here. These beds are just amazing. All right, so all of these I'm going to be getting mulched today and fertilized. What I have for some of my mulch, this is not nearly enough, but this is what we're gonna start with. So we had wanted to get the corn planted last week, but it was so wet that we really couldn't get in there with a the tiller. So as you can see, the ground's gotten pretty hard from all of the rain and just sitting for the past month since its first till. Fast forward a week and we're actually dry. Um, we've had a lot of wind over the past week and um, some hot days it's gotten up into the high 80s several times so now we actually could use some rain so the good thing is it's dry enough to get in there with a tiller and we can get our corn planted the bad thing is that we need some rain on our pastures so that the grass will grow now that it's warming up all right so when you're planting sweet corn one thing to keep in mind is there are different varieties of sweet corn some of them can be planted together some cannot. Um, your quality of your sweet corn will be compromised if you have two types of sweet corn that are not compatible with each other. It's probably best just to plant your whole area of sweet corn in one variety. What we're gonna be planting is uh, this hybrid sweet corn luscious. So this is a yellow and white mixture on the kernels and this is going to be a sugar enhanced variety so it'll be a little bit sweeter than just a traditional sweet corn but not the super sweet there are different varieties like I said and I'm not an expert on that but this type holds a little bit better so you have a longer period where you can harvest it before it turns hard uh, it stores really well the other thing to keep in mind with where you're planting your sweet corn if you have another area where you're going to be planting popcorn 
for field corn, you do need to have um, considerable space between those so that they don't cross pollinate with your sweet corn. Otherwise, again, the quality of the kernels on your sweet corn are gonna be just really poor. You'll have poorly filled out ears. So I'm going to show you this area where we're actually gonna have field corn. So this plowed up area that you can see out there will be field corn. And my dad has not actually planted it yet. He said he will plant it in about two weeks. Um, that, the other thing that to keep in mind is that there can be a gap in between when your um, corn actually tossels out and is pollinated. So as long as your sweet corn and your field corn are not uh, pollinating at the same time, they can be closer together and you're not going to have a problem. So we are actually far enough away from that patch of uh, what will be filled corn. So over here is where our actual little tiny patch of sweet corn will be. And even if the corn was planted at the same time and pollinated at the same time, we are far enough away from that that there's not gonna be any cross pollination. One other thing to keep in mind when you're planting corn, sweet corn, field corn, any kind, it is pollinated uh, by wind through the air. So you need a, a block of it um, that enables the best pollination. So this is the little uh, hand plow and it works great to put in little rows where we can actually plant this corn. Um, it's not very good if your ground is not tilled up. It, it won't go through really hard ground, but once you get it tilled up, you can make nice little rows with it. Um, I also used it last year with our corn to go between the rows to kind of get the weeds out after several weeks of growth. So we're going to be making rows and getting this corn planted. All right, we've got most of the sweet corn in. I still have a couple of rows to do. I ran out of the luscious sweet corn seeds, so I've pulled out my incredible uh, sweet corn seeds. These also are a sugar enhanced hybrid sweet corn, so they're completely okay to be planted along with luscious. There won't be any problem with these two cross pollinating and producing an inferior ear of corn. The incredible uh, hybrid corn is a solid yellow ear, and like I said earlier, the luscious is a bicolor, so you've got white kernels and yellow kernels together. All right, corn is planted, and we worked on setting up our soaker hoses for the peppers and tomatoes as well. We're going to get um, two more packs to finish off this bed right here. It looks like it's doing really what I want it to do. I didn't want a lot of uh, water coming down on the tops of my tomatoes because that increases the risk of disease. So I wanted more of a watering from the base and this, will, this looks like it's gonna do good. Right down here where the water first comes in, there's a higher pressure. So that's spraying up a little bit more. Um, our final soaker hose will actually be over here on this bed once we get the additional packs of them and um, then we'll probably just do a few less holes at the end so that the, it doesn't spray up on the leaves as bad. And now on to the potatoes. It got hot out here fast. I think we have a predicted high of 86 today. He started out at 46. Um, so I'm going to be working on mulching these potatoes and getting some fertilizer down. So we're definitely going to need more mulch on all these potatoes. I did get this little bed mulched with the baby doll wool and I went ahead and mulched this pepper bed really good with the wool just because it, it seems to be kind of baking out here in the sun and this will help it hold some moisture in. Got a couple of these buckets mulched with the wool. Now the baby doll wool that I was um, mulching with was a mixture of the wool and some bedding off the floor where they were 
sheared. It's all of the stuff that was around their bottoms that's soiled with manure, stuff that you're not gonna um, use in any of your spinning projects with the wool. So it makes an excellent mulch in your garden. It holds in moisture. It has some properties that help repel pest and it does break down over time and puts a lot of nitrogen back into your soil. So we'll get additional mulch for the remaining beds of the potatoes and use that instead of healing them. But it's really hot today, so I'm gonna call it a day out here in the garden.